I, I, I sort of came up with a list of a set of definitions because there, there, are, there are social practices, it's clear to me, not social practice. Um, the first is, is, is obvious, I think it's, it's art that deals with social or political issues. Um, it's whose goals are, are social awareness, right, and, and change, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, it, it can either be oppositional to uh, forms or venues in the art world, or it can, can, you know, forms or structures in the art world or paradigms, or it can work within existing fine art paradigms. The second is, is very familiar to, to to me, because I think it's the category I fall into most often, and most of the people do, which is uh, a kind of cultural production where the creators um, um, establish relationship with an, with an audience, and it erases the boundary with the creator of the work of art, or the, the work of art itself, and the audience, um, and that, that comes under a little bit under Nicholas Bourdieu's relational aesthetics. Um, I, like, I also really like the term engagement and, and participatory practice. Mm -hmm. Those more tightly reflect what, what, I'm, what I'm interested in. Um, and that can have an activist purpose and deal with social issues, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Mm -hmm. I think there's also uh, another kind, which is artists who are um, identify strongly as activists and whose work is in the same is in the service of some political or social change and they use mostly documentation um, or provocation provocative materials um, to, to, to work their subject through um, so many many of them, a number of them don't even think of themselves primarily as artists. They think of themselves primarily as some kind of activist who who uh, produces material for mm -hmm. the the other. There's two other categories that that I realized, which is the artists who work in social space and work on site. A lot of architects and urban planners think of themselves as being in a form of social practice. Interesting. Yeah, and, and also artists who work with social media, um, which is, you know, when I thought about it, social media is actually a different form of social space, and they use they use media to create um, primary, well, primary, to create relationships with others using that media, often using role-playing, um, appropriation, art, you know, classic art strategies, but also very uh, popular culture strategies. So that's, you know, I, and I've been distilling this. Uh, these are the five that come to my mind. I'm particularly interested in where you feel that you and Fallen Fruit fall in that quintet. We, my work and Fallen Fruit's work really is in, a, in relationship to participation. Um, and creating the, the work of art is always in a service to some kind of engagement, um, in, enrolling some kind of participation, you know, creating some kind of engagement with others. And it's extremely varied, uh, but part of it means that we give away a lot of authorship, classic authorship. So collaborating with schools, with institutions, with other artists, with individuals, but, but broadly speaking with the public, and that's, that's always, you know, I've been working on the, the, the sort of concept of the public for a long time, and it's so slippery, it's a really sloppy idea, the way that it's formulated at, at, in our time. Um, you know, the public is whoever you're talking to. Um, so, the... The, the classic piece that I would refer to in Fallen Fruit is the Public Fruit Jam, where we really sit, and, and we think of it really as one of our iconic pieces, where we, we sit with a group of people, we are not experts, we try, you know, we've done it a million times, we still resist kind of becoming the, the jam experts in a way, um, 
we sit without recipes. We we work. A jam is very simple to make. So you know we we know we know that it's basically fail proof. And whatever happens between us is creative and also experimental because we provide so few guidelines. What all there is is a lot of fruit of of great variety and and the somehow that combination of choice and absence of definition uh, creates a lot of activity among people and between us and the visitors, but between the visitors and each other, right? So all of us are, are really on the same level where we're just asking questions and responding in a very social way, in a, in a, in a very natural way, I would say. And what we learned, which I think many social practice artists have learned, is that the best way to get people to engage with each other is to give them a task. Uh, that task is, you know, it's, it's almost secondary. It, it can't be a really foolish task, but it has to be thought through with a kind of openness that allows something else to happen. And that something else is the real goal. The You know, people have always... The jam is, is a nice example because there's nothing really remains except perhaps the jar of jam and mm -hmm. some people ask if that's like that's the work is that the art and uh, you know our position is that no that's the byproduct mm -hmm. right that's the, that's that's sort of the thing that happens that that makes everything else move along but that's not the work